Hey everybody, it's Casey here at Sea Run Flying Tackle. Today, I'm going to show you how to bar fish for coho salmon. So bar fishing for coho is one of my favorite ways to fish on the Fraser River when we got the opportunities. The last few years, typically we haven't had openings into, until early November, but there's still opportunities to catch fish. Now, for bar fishing, you don't need a ton of fancy gear. It's an awesome social fishery. It's a great way to get the family introduced to the sport and an awesome way to come hang out with some friends down at the river. For this, basically what we need is a rod, a reel, a lawn chair, a broad holder, and some good bait. I'm gonna show you a few tricks that I like to use to have a successful day on the river. So my standard bar fishing setup, I use basically whatever I'm gonna use for float fishing uh, for salmon or steelhead. Um, like I was saying, you don't need anything super special for this type of fishery. Basically something that's a strong enough rod to handle the fish that we're gonna be catching in that two to you know, 10, 11, 12 pound range, and something that can handle casting out a fair size weight. Um, I most commonly will use an ounce and a half uh, to four ounces for a sinker, and that's just to hold everything stationary on the bottom. You can see I've got my rod and my reel. I'm using my center pin, it works just fine. Spinning setup works just fine. Level line, whatever you got. I'm saying the lawn chair, I've got my tackle, my bait, and my rod holder and a nice spot on the Fraser River with a gentle slope, gravel or sandy beach. That's basically what I'm looking for here. We don't want a big steep drop off or any giant rocks or anything like that that we're gonna hang our gear up in. So for bar fishing, I like to have my reels loaded up with braided line. You can use monofilament if you like. Braided line is a little thinner in diameter, a little less drag in the water, and you can get away with using a little bit less weight uh, to hold your gear on the bottom. Um, I typically use either 30 or 40 pound, and it's not so much for the breaking strength that it is just for that diameter. Uh, from there, I attach my braided line straight to the top of my spreader bar on the swivel there. On the bottom of my spreader bar, you can see there is no swivel. That, I just run a piece of line down to a swivel, down to a weight. And I'll either use uh, a dollar weight or, uh, or a pyramid style, anywhere from one ounce to four ounces, just depending on the spot that I'm fishing and, uh, and how hard the current is running. I'll always use a little bit lighter line that I'm using for my main line and my leader, just this way, if my weight hangs up on the bottom, I just wanna lose that guy right there. I don't wanna lose my bar rig and everything like that. Makes it a little bit more expensive when we're out there. So for my spreader bar, there's something that I like to do that I find a little bit unique to how I bar fish. I'll always put a duo lock snap on the end of my spreader bar. And just like when I'm setting up my steelhead leaders or my salmon leaders, I've always got a little swivel on the end. And that way I can have leaders that are already ready to go pre-baited. Because when the action's hot when you're bar fishing, you want to keep your line in the water as much as you can. I'll keep leaders already rigged up, baited, ready to go, and that way, and when I reel my line in with a fish or if my bait's been stripped, I can cast out there and be ready to go. Leader size, 12 or 15 pound. Uh, use whatever you like. I find that they're not that leader shy in this fishery, so you know we don't have to worry about getting ultra, ultra, ultra thin. And when I'm using braid when I'm bar fishing, this is the one instance I won't use fluorocarbon. In my experience in the past, every time I've gone to set the hook using fluorocarbon when I'm bar fishing, I snap that leader. And I don't know why that happens, but it's just the way that works. So uh, my preferred leader for this would be Maximal Ultra Green. I personally use 15 pound. Now on the business end here, for this particular spot, there's a lot of jacks down here. So I use a smaller hook. Um, this is a size four barbless no escape. I've got a size 12 corky on my leader and that just helps keep everything buoyant and floating up off the bottom a little bit. You can see the chartreuse yarn that I've got in there as well. I tie that into my bait loop with an overhand knot. And the reason I use this is so that I can pull that bait loop open um, when, I, when my hands are cold and it's also um, a way to hold scent. I'll put uh, some Procure garlic uh, bloody tuna in there, uh, gel, always gel, and that just helps entice the bite, puts a bigger scent trail in the water. And you can see I've got about a loony sized piece of row. Very, very simple setup, quick and easy to use. If you need to learn how to use this, how to tie the knots for this, we have this on our YouTube channel. That would be the egg loop or bait loop uh, video that you'd be looking for to tie this leader. So I'm baited up and ready to go. I'm gonna apply a little bit of fresh scent into that yarn like I was saying. It 
set that off to the side. And now I'm going to cast everything out. Now, one of the more common mistakes that I see when people are bar fishing is they're trying to cast this out to the other side of the river. It's not necessary. A lot of times these fish travel a lot closer to the shore than you think, but it's always good to play with your distances. What I always like to do if I'm fishing with friends or family, I will stagger our lines. Somebody will cast in a little closer, the next line will be out a little bit further, a little bit further after that, and we'll try and find that travel lane that those fish are using to move their way up river. So I typically start by just lobbing a quick little cast out there, nothing crazy far at all. Let that sit on the bottom. You don't want to feel your weight bouncing downstream. If that's the case, you need to step up to a larger weight. You want everything to stay stationary right on the bottom. So from here, I'm just going to turn the clicker onto my reel. I'm going to place it into my rod holder. And I just wind down so that I'm tight to my weight. And now all I'm going to do, I'm going to sit down in my chair. Hopefully got a nice fire going to keep me warm. Enjoy my coffee, and I'm going to watch this rod tip, wait for it to start bouncing, and that's going to let me know that I got a fish on. A lot of times people will add a bell to the end of their line, that way you can detect a bite if uh, you know, you're not paying attention to your line or whatever. Uh, I cast mine into the river, so I don't have one today. So now that I've showed you the basic rundown on how to bar fish, just remember, come on down to the river, check your regulations first. This would be on the Department of Fisheries and Oceans website. You're going to be wanting to look for the tidal portion of the Fraser River, the salmon fishing regulations, just to make sure that it is open before you go. Fraser River, the tidal portion where I am here now, would be area 2917. If you check on your, the salmon regulations on the website there, it'll let you know whether you're good to go or whether you're not. I hope you like this. This is one of my favorite ways to spend an afternoon down at the river. If you got any questions, you know where to find me at the shop. Check us out online, www.c-run.com. I hope you like this video. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and thanks for watching, everybody. Good luck on the water.